Hey friends, what's good? Derek here from Bomb Socks with more Bomb Bites, where we feast upon the words of Christ one bite at a time. So I want to get into chapter 3 of Philippians with you here. There's a story here that I think really sets up this chapter well. Some of you might know it. It's from Dallin H. Oaks, who's actually telling a story from what Gordon B. Hinckley said years ago. Many years ago, this conference heard of a young man who found the restored gospel while he was studying in the United States. This young man was in a place where Christianity was not the preferred form of worship. As this man was about to return to his native land, President Gordon B. Hinckley asked him what would happen to him when he returned to his home as a Christian. My family will be disappointed, the young man answered. They may cast me out and regard me as dead. As for my future and my career, all opportunity may be foreclosed against me. Are you willing to pay so great a price for the gospel, President Hinckley asked. Now let me pause this story, take you into chapter 3, chapter heading, Paul sacrifices all things for Christ. Now, Paul starts off and he kind of gives a resume to these uh, Philippian saints. And again, he, as, as you're going through this, Paul just has a very content and confident vibe about him. Verse number five, it's like he starts a resume. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. He's like, man, I did everything right according to what a Pharisee and others did. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yet doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. Again, this confidence that Paul has. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung. Kind of a funny way to talk about that. The footnote says refuse, but again, he's like, all of this is dung. That I may win Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. And then this verse 13 Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those which are before. Meaning, I'm going to leave behind my past. I was reading a business book recently, and it was interesting. They said, you can do anything you want with your past. Now, again, it's not easy. If it were easy, everybody would do it. Some of you have horrible pasts, some difficulties. He said, your past is like your backyard. It's like, you own it. You can do whatever you want with it. You can re-landscape it. You can form it to where it can absolutely bless your life. And again, it's not easy. Some have very traumatic things from the past, but you can do whatever you want with it. You can form it. You can frame it. You can play it however you want to. And that's what Paul's doing. He's like, all of this stuff behind me, yeah, it really wasn't the best for me, but I am moving forward, forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth for those things which are before. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now you even go back to chapter one, verse number 12, he kind of puts all this together. And I know we're backtracking here, but I would that you should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furthering of the gospel. And I love how Paul is just owning the past and what it seems to be doing for him is it makes his present much better. And he also has this wonderful future that he's looking forward to. So Paul is teaching some wonderful things here. Now, finishing up this story that Elder Oaks talked about at the beginning, tearfully, the young man answered, it's true, isn't it? When that was affirmed, he replied, then what else matters? That is the spirit of sacrifice among many of our new members. You look at this man, he's like, you know what? I have a great hope for my future and what that's going to do, it's going to make my present that much better. And so Paul, at the time, if you remember, he seems to be enjoying his time as he's there under house arrest in Rome, in a prison cell, writing to the Philippian saints, just going, and you know what? We're doing okay. We're doing okay because Paul is focusing on Jesus Christ. There's a practice that's been done, and it's done in all kinds of Christian backgrounds. It's done in business settings, and it's the idea of writing to your future self. If you've got goals, if you've got things that you want to accomplish, you talk to your future self about the things you want to be able to experience. Now, in the seminary manual, actually, it suggests to try something like that. Uh, it says, think about the next 
next five years of your life and write a letter to your future self. Include in your letter the following details. One, things you may need to sacrifice in the next five years to come to know the Lord better and prepare for eternal life. Obstacles you might encounter as you make sacrifices and press towards the prize. What have you learned about the importance of sacrifice and the blessings that can come as a result? And then the last one is how sacrifice can help you become more like the Savior. As you write these things down, you'll be able to see, and it's going to bless your future self as you start looking right now, the importance and the blessing of sacrificing. So I love this. Paul, again, and he's just like, you know what? All of these things, they've been like refuse, like dung. But I count myself fortunate to be able to know more about Jesus Christ now. And I love the principle that's taught here. And it's such a great chapter. Grateful for it. And I know that it's true. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks as always for sharing. So grateful as always that you do that. And please go check out our amazingly comfortable gospel theme socks at bombsocks.com. Have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.